Hey guys, welcome back to another lesson. Now, we have figured out where the carbohydrates are in our diet, and we also understand the principles of carbohydrate counting and correction doses. But of course, so far, all we've given you is example figures. So the next logical question is, how do I figure out what my personal carbohydrate and correction ratio is? And there's a few methods you can use, which we're gonna discuss in this lesson. So let's jump right in. So as you can see on the board here, we have a few different methods that we've written out. Hopefully you can see it, we'll zoom in, um, hopefully to make it a bit clearer. So on the left, or your left I think it is, we have your carb ratio and the three different methods we can use to calculate it. And also on here on the right, we have your correction ratio and the three methods we can use to calculate it. They're pretty similar, but we'll start with the carbohydrate ratios. So the first method, is using your total daily dose of insulin. So this includes both your background insulin and the average of your rapid insulin that you've given over the course of the last three days um, totaled up. And then what you do is you take that figure, so your total daily insulin dose, you take 500 and divide it by your total daily dose. So let's say for example, my total daily dose is 50 units. I divide 500 by 50, and that gives me a value of 10. So my carbohydrate ratio is one unit for 10 grams. If it was a total daily dose of 100, then my final figure from 500 divided by 100 is five, and therefore my carbohydrate ratio is one unit for five grams of carbohydrate. Now, this method has some flaws because obviously this is on the assumption that your total daily dose is correct. And obviously if you're on this course, something's probably mismatched in terms of how your control is going. So perhaps you're taking too much insulin, you're overcorrecting, so you're taking much more insulin than you need, um, or perhaps you miss a meal in the day. So actually your total daily dose is skewed because you, let's say you don't eat breakfast, then that's one insulin dose that you're not taking. So in order to do this, you'd have to assume that you were gonna take some insulin for breakfast, calculate that theoretically, and then add it into the calculation. Some people also um, use the 400 rule. So if you ever come across that, it's the same principle, but rather than 500, they use 400. Of course, one of the other drawbacks of this method is if you're taking too much insulin. So this is a good starting point, but obviously, like I said, it does have its drawbacks because it's on the assumption your current insulin dose is correct. This also might not be the best method for people that are newly diagnosed, because typically we will underdose people when they're first diagnosed to avoid the risk of hypos, and then we'll gradually creep up the insulin dose as they get more accustomed to their control, as we start to see more patterns in their glucose levels, and they start to gain access to type one diabetes education. Then we can start to do this uh, in more detail and actually get a more accurate figure. Number two is using your body weight. Now we work in kilograms for this, I'm afraid. So if you work used to stones and pounds, then there are 2.2 pounds to every kilogram. So you can kind of reverse engineer it or just use an online calculator. But we can use simple rules of thumbs here. So if you are under 50 kilograms, so you're quite a light individual, you will probably be more sensitive to your insulin. So therefore we tend to apply a one unit to 20 grams of carbohydrate ratio. Obviously the closer you get to 50, the less likely you are to be one to 20 maybe. So you might actually be more like a one to 15 or a one to 18, but one to 20 is a good starting point. Whereas if you weigh between 50 and 100 kilograms, then this gives us your pretty basic one to 10 grams um, carbohydrate ratio. So this is what we usually start people off anyway, unless there's a reason not to. Like for example, they weigh under 50 kilograms, or we can see that they're very sensitive to the insulin that we're already giving them. But 50 to 100 kilograms, a good starting point is one to 10 grams, and then you can fine tune it as you start to see the glucose trends. And if you're over 100 kilograms, you're usually less sensitive to your insulin, unless you're like a seven foot five monster and actually still have a body mass index of say 22 and over 100 kilograms. Um, but most people, if you're over 100 kilograms, you might be tipping into the overweight or obese categories for the body mass index, and that has a direct relation to your sensitivity your, to your insulin, generally speaking. So a good starting point, again, is one unit to five grams. So you're needing more insulin than the other two examples here, but again, you just need what you need. So don't worry too much about what your dose is, just more uh, trying to find the right dose for you. You know, we'll talk about managing your weight in a different video later on in the course, but that's a good starting point if you weigh over 100 kilograms, one unit to five grams. 
And last but not least, what you can also use is your basal insulin dose. Now this ties into your total daily insulin dose in a way, but just from what I will do in practice and just something I thought I'd share with you, is this your, your background or your basal insulin can give you a lot of information about the type of ratio that you might be expecting to have. So for example, if you have a background insulin of 50 units a day, and we're looking at this total daily dose example in um, example one, 500 divided by 50 already gives you a total daily do uh, uh, a ratio sorry, of one unit to 10 grams. 500 divided by 50, is one unit to 10 grams. And if that's just made up of your background insulin, then any rapid insulin on top of that is gonna be extra insulin. So you're probably gonna be a bit more resistant to your insulin and therefore one to 10 probably won't work for you. So I wouldn't base your entire assumption on this, but it does give you extra information about what sort of ratio to expect, because if you're already at a one to 10 or a one to five or a one to 20, just with your basal insulin, then you're probably gonna have a lower ratio um, once you start adding in the total daily doses with the rapid insulin included. Which now moves us on to correction doses. And it's a very similar principle. The only difference is we change some numbers. So the first example here is rather than using the 500 rule, we use the 100 rule. So you divide 100 by your total daily dose and that will give you a correction ratio. Exactly the same principle. Total up your total insulin, including both your background and your rapid insulin, and then take 100 and divide it by that there's your ratio. The same drawbacks apply in terms of what if your insulin dose is incorrect. So again, take it with a pinch of salt, particularly if you've been finding that your glucose levels are suboptimal. Some people will use the rule of 130. Again, you might come across that, but we'll just stick with 100 because it's the most commonly used. Number two is again, you can use your body weight. So as you're starting to see, if you're lighter, you tend to be more sensitive to your insulin. So if you weigh under 50 kilograms, one unit will typically drop you by five millimoles per liter. If you weigh between 50 and 100 kilograms, one unit will drop you roughly by three millimoles per liter. And if you weigh over 100 kilograms, one unit will drop you by two. Now, obviously the um, heavier you get or the more that you weigh and the more resistant you are to your insulin, then you might find that this number even becomes lower. We'll talk a little bit about that in a second. And number three, again, we can use our basal insulin to give us an informed opinion about what sort of ratio to expect. Because again, if you're taking 100 units of your background insulin, for example, 100 divided by 100 is one. So you're already at one unit drops you one. So then when we're factoring our, our rapid insulin on top of that, we're probably gonna be expecting one unit drops us below one millimole per liter. So that means you're very resistant to your insulin. And this actually kind of highlights one of the drawbacks with the whole thing about carbohydrate counting. And that is when you're taking very big doses of insulin, the system falls apart. If you're taking big doses of insulin, let's say 200 units a day, which is something I've come across quite frequently actually, then you're doing, let's say 100 divided by 200, and you're gonna get 0.5. So one unit drops you 0.5 millimoles per litre. Now that might very well be your ratio, but suddenly it, the metrics are starting to break down because you know, how far do you take it? One unit drops you 0.1, you know, so actually then it's probably easier to just say, increase your insulin by five units or 10 units or 10% or 20%. Um, because at that point, there's probably not gonna be such a methodical approach that's gonna actually translate to good glucose control. So like I say, we'll do another video on that for people who will be particularly resistant to their insulin because usually that ties in directly to their lifestyle choices, their body weight, their fitness levels. Some people are just resistant by genetics, um, but you can always make the best of the situation that you have. Now, in terms of these three um, methods, I wouldn't just use one, maybe use all three to kind of calculate what your ratio will be. But as I emphasize with all of this, the real key is getting it down on paper and seeing what the patterns are. That'll lead you in terms of what the actual ratio you expect to see. And one of the take homes as well is, you might have different ratios at different meals. So just because you're a one to 10 at breakfast, you might actually have a lower ratio or higher ratio at the other meals. Um, so it's about tracking, measuring and then seeing how it works in practice and then you'll get to your destination in terms of calculating your ratios um, going forward. So we'll leave it there for this lesson and we'll see you at the next lesson.